are you looking for an example of what you can do with Geoda? If you're just getting started with the software, you can check out a video that introduces you to it by following the link below. But if you're already familiar with Geoda, let's see how we can use it. In this particular case, what we thought was an insight turned out to be an artifact. And we'll show you how we got there. A lot of research has shown that more economic hardship is associated with worse health outcomes. And by looking at the city of Chicago, we see that this relationship holds when looking at an economic hardship index on the x-axis of the scatter plot and premature mortality rates on the y-axis at the neighborhood level. Premature mortality refers to years of potential life lost, which is the difference between the average death age and the age of early death, while economic hardship is measured through a combination of six socioeconomic indicators, among them poverty and unemployment. But according to what is called the immigrant paradox in the literature, immigrants often do better than natives on a number of outcomes despite facing many obstacles in the way to become socially integrated. In particular, some point to groups that show similar socioeconomic hardship but have better health outcomes than residents with similar hardship levels who are not immigrants. In that regard, by looking at Chicago neighborhoods in Geoda's scatterplot matrix, we can see that the positive relationship between economic hardship and premature mortality holds in predominantly white and African-American areas here, but does not hold in more Hispanic neighborhoods here. What this means is that more Hispanic areas do not show the high premature mortality levels that African-American neighborhoods show, despite the similar hardship that they face. A regression analysis confirms that there is a positive association between more premature mortality and more African-American neighborhoods, but a negative association with more Hispanic neighborhoods. So why is this happening? The literature has suggested reasons for this, such as more home-cooked instead of processed food being consumed, better access to smaller local grocery stores, or stronger family structures in immigrant neighborhoods. And Geoda allows us to explore the plausibility of different hypotheses, such as, what if differences between Hispanic and African American neighborhoods have to do with insurance? If we select areas that are predominantly white in a parallel coordinate plot, we can see that they're concentrated in the north with low levels of hardship, as in this map on the left, premature mortality on the center map, and percent of uninsured on the right map. In contrast, when we select areas that are predominantly African American, you can see that they're concentrated in the south and west with high levels of hardship and premature mortality, but lower levels of insurance. Finally, areas that are predominantly Hispanic are concentrated in the west, but outside the African American neighborhoods and they show high levels of hardship in uninsured residents, but lower levels of premature mortality. All in all, the insurance hypothesis doesn't work since it cannot explain the difference between African American and Hispanic neighborhoods regarding premature mortality. So let's turn to a different hypothesis. What if differences have to do with the age structure of different neighborhoods? Let's look at conditional box plots that depict the distribution of seniors and children for two groups of neighborhoods those with less than 50% of Hispanic population on the left, and those with more than 50% on the right. If the box plot ranges are lower, this reflects lower rates of seniors or children, and vice versa. Here, we find out that more Hispanic neighborhoods in Chicago are younger on average, with fewer seniors on the left and more children than other neighborhoods on the right. Since we would expect areas with younger average ages to have lower premature mortality rates, this might explain the difference. And in contrast, you can see here results for other neighborhoods. Areas that are more white have fewer seniors, but also fewer children, while more African American neighborhoods show more seniors and more children. When we look at the data documentation to see how the premature mortality variable was constructed, it turns out that it was adjusted by population, but not by age. Age-adjusted premature mortality rates are not available publicly at the track level for Chicago. But if they were, we could test if the initial results that were in line with the immigrant paradox explanation turn out to be an artifact of data construction. In other words, we could test if the relationship between more Hispanic neighborhoods and less premature mortality is primarily driven by the fact that residents in Hispanic neighborhoods are just younger on average. And, if you control for age, whether the typical relationship between high hardship and more premature deaths would also hold here. The lesson of this example is to check how your variables are constructed before you start to avoid discovering insights that turn out to be data artifacts. If you would like to see other examples, you can go to our website, from which you can also download Geoda, 
and find dozens of datasets, examples, and demo scripts for you to test the capabilities of our software. We also have a YouTube channel with lots of recorded lectures of Dr. Anseling explaining the spatial methods implemented in Geoda and examples of how to use it. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can also find our contact information in the description of this video or submit a ticket on Geoda's GitHub site. Thanks for watching.